All right, so for every bass player that's listening that will kill me if I don't ask the right questions, <laughs> what was your first uh, bass that you purchased or the first axe that you A Fender used? Precision. Wait, you've always used a Fender Precision? Yeah, from that was the first axe I had, yeah, um, back in the 1975, I guess, yeah. Okay, so what you're known for, how do you, how do you get your tone? Like, what bass are you using? Mostly a Precision bass. No More Moon? Yeah, the moon comes in sometimes. That's more like a jazz style bass, like a Fender jazz style bass. Yeah. Here's the weird thing. Okay, so just recently played with Larry Graham like two months ago. Wow. And he had not only did he have the 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 moon. Yeah. He I had the mic. He, oh. Oh, he didn't have the mic thing on him. That mic we was were, amazing. We were in a studio setting, but I I saw blood marks on it. So. Wow. Yeah, like so he really like gets That's into crazy. It. Right, but his. It was weird to me because I saw the moon bass and I was like, wow, I wonder like if he has the same tone as Pino. Because, you know, he was just in a corner like practicing whatever and it didn't sound that way. So how do you, mm. what the sound that we know you for, like what strings are you using? What what are all yeah. your secrets? Please <laughs> yeah, yeah. divulge yeah. them to the world right now. I assure right you, now. even if you were to give it, yeah. wouldn't you matter. Yeah. still wouldn't matter. match it. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it, it's public knowledge. It's out there. I've done interviews before no, regarding gear and stuff like that. But, Tell us everything. But yeah, I mean, a Fender, my Desert Island bass would be a Fender Precision bass. It's just got one sound and a tone control, right? Just mm -hmm. one pickup and a tone. You don't have a selection of different sounds from pickups. It's pretty much one sound. Um, and I like the sound of flat wound strings on it. They feel better. Just physically, they feel better. And the longer you leave them on, the more warmth they have. The sound is warm. So you the know? older? Yeah. I've played your bass before, and those strings are really, really thin. Like, you can't... Oh, really? You well, it can't depends do which bass. that I expect. To, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm thinking Seinfeld. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need like wire wound strings, round wound strings for that sound, really, like Larry, Larry's sound, you know. So, how often do you break a string? Never. Yeah, because you oh. barely touch the string. Yeah, I don't hit the strings hard at all. Yeah. So the Fender you have, right? I don't know how many Fenders you have on you. Yeah, a lot. Okay, so, <laughs> so <laughs> well, let me ask: Has your life <laughs> right. since Voodoo has your life changed as far as the volume of bases that you have? Or yeah, since the yeah, Who? probably the Who, yeah, yeah, with right. the Who, yeah, gave me the opportunity to to buy to all ramp kinds up of and beautiful, all that stuff. yeah. Okay, so between in, in the Voodoo days, between two thousand two thousand three, mm -hmm. how many bases are you carrying around with you? Uh, like two, pretty much. That's what I remember. Okay, yeah, yeah. So. Like the strings you had on your voodoo bass, do you still have your voodoo bass? Yeah, with the same strings. You do. Kn <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh yeah, I put those on in '93. 1993. Yeah. And it it Are it's always there? just stayed in working order and. Yeah, they they sound like I say they sound warmer the longer they kind of settle into the instrument. Just the string itself settles wow. in. Okay, I I have a fear because <clears throat> remember what happened to your moon bass? Yeah. What we're, happened? That voodoo bait. Uh, we're not a real podcast. We don't get context. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 yeah. We just it's assume a, that everybody's on the road with the two of you all yeah. the time. Right. Please continue. Well, yeah, I was. Uh, Talk I was, about what happened to your black moon base. It was actually the. So this is weird, but the moon base is I had two stolen. Uh, so the white one was stolen. The first one I played on the voodoo uh, album was the white base. That was stolen somehow when I checked it in in San Francisco airport. On a United flight, it just didn't come out in L.A. and that was a Lester sort of it. During the Voodoo tour? Just before the Voodoo tour. Damn. Just before now, we had. I didn't want to hear the story. I know. Now I'm having PTSD. All right, keep. But going. but then I had a uh, you know I, I had a, well then I contacted the company and and they made me a new moon base. <laughs> They're like, yeah, right, dude, Pino, we won't give you one. Yeah, but they said you know there's a limited run of the Larry Graham. So we, 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 you know, we, we can't do you the white one like, like Larry bass. And I said, okay, well, make me a black one then. So that's, a, that's how I got the black moon bass. Then that got stolen from a Who gig wow. in like 2008. Yo, who keeps stealing Pino's basses? Yeah, Strange, right? Two moon but there's a good end to this story. Oh, it came back to me. Oh, thank you. That How was they quick. Find it? <laughs> well, somebody uh, bought it from a porn store or something uh, and... Um, they, st they, were, they were a fan, and they'd been watching some videos of us playing voodoo, and they saw the bass had a couple of nicks out of the neck. Wow. And he's like, I think this is 
Pino's place, and they they reached out to me, and I got it back. Incredible, that's right? Real love, yeah. man. Yeah. Real fucking and somebody bass players. needed that. They took it to the pawn wow. shop. That's real. Well, that is a great story. You were going to skip over that? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so my thing is, is that the, the voodoo fender, that should never leave your house ever again. Like, yeah, yeah. That, well, it's safe. It's safe. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. seriously. For me, I just got my things fall apart drum set back. Where so, was it? No, um, the studio tried to uh, uh, auction it. Wow. So, are y'all really saying that an instrument? You use an instrument for every project, and then we just move on. Is that what we're saying? You know what? I'm, I'm different like that. So, start with Fallon. Mm -hmm. Every 100 episodes, I make Ludwig make me a brand new drum set. Okay. It's problematic now for storage because I have about 63 drum sets, like, and I'm running out of space. Mm -hmm. So I got to stop that. But. <laughs> <laughs> To your chagrin. But for the most part, I've, I've documented every drum set I've played on for records. You know, so I've, every record a different set, that's what I'm saying. Um, Sort of, kind of. So, I mean, but not by design. Like, oh, for this particular one, I'm going to use this one. For this, you know, but I... I right. Yeah, for Roots albums, I will like, hey, let me... Especially with Phrenology, which was like, okay, let's make the anti things Fall Apart record. Oh, let me try a different drum set. So yeah. that's where that comes into play. Can I can I yeah. ask a question? So since you're divulging some of your technique, so where where's the secret sauce? I, I'm thinking gain structure and the, like because you know Amir, how you're always talking about how the lighter you hit a drum, yes, the more effective. Yeah, I just discovered the lighter you hit, right. that's where the pop uh -huh. comes. Well, so it's, it's, it's the same on a bass, right? Because if you hit, well, if you hit any inst instrument too hard, it's going to choke it, right? If you hit the string too hard, it's going to bounce against the fret and choke the the envelope of the note, you know? So, I mean, a light touch gives you more bottom end for sure. Which is kind of counterintuitive almost. Like you would Yeah, think you'd think you'd you know, get bass, more bass you know, like, by hitting uh, it hard, but that just takes out the bottom end. And the harmonics, or how, how do you, like, is that part of that? Not really. I mean, you know, I, I love the sound that James Jameson made on the bass, and, and that was the idea back in 93 when I got that bass. Mm -hmm. I immediately put those old um, uh, heavy gauge labella strings on it and and just left them on ever since, you know. But they don't have any top on them. So if you play like Jaco, Jaco style hom harmonics, you won't get them out of those flat strings at all. Mm. So it's more about the fundamental sound. And, um, you know, I don't really have the tone on very much either. The tone is kind of on half or sometimes less than half. So it's a real thump. Well, what know? about the volume? Come, the like, volume's on full, yeah. How do you do your gain structure until you get to your amp or whatever? Yeah, I mean, I, I just I just literally have the volume on full, and then it's up to whoever's getting the sound. What kind of amp? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, B15s are great, right? The Ampeg B15s. For studio or in the for studio. live? Or yeah, studio, yeah. But live, I mean, I used one on, on a tour recently live because everyone's on in ears now, so you don't need that big sound behind you because you uh -huh. can hear it clearly, you know. Okay. So, uh, wait, uh, I said a brain for it. Um, oh, oh, so if I'm learning bass, again, on a, I'm using the, the opposite of you, a bass player I still respect, but kind of the opposite, flea. Yeah, yeah, totally. What type of strings am I, are those like heavy duty strings that could take the pounding and... and Not necessarily, but he probably uses like a medium gauge... Uh, round wound string, I, I, I would guess, because then you get the pop out of it, and and the round wound strings allow you to get that bounce when you hit it with your thumb. Now, do you have the ability to go full throttle pop if you if challenge? I mess with it a little bit. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 but but I'm, no, that's that's not my ballpark really. Okay, okay, um, but if I, I guess. Your particular, uh, your particular uh, choice of strings, um, if you haven't changed them since 1993, then, <laughs> like, what if you run into a situation? Like, now, Ampex tapes are hard to find. Right. Now, yeah, I was recording yeah, yeah. at a time where Ampex tapes were everywhere. But had I known then, stock up on Ampex tapes, I would have stocked. Totally, but now, totally. here we are in 2023, and you can hardly find them. What if you're in a situation in which... Strings that you haven't changed since 
30 years ago go like is there a likelihood of them well you know one of them broke on a, on a on a tour with D actually on a 2015 tour with D the, the E string on that on that thing broke and I put a new version of it on and it sounded like it wasn't very good at all so so they changed the recipes throughout the well no but those strings just sound different when they get older so if you got three like strings that are one. like 30 yeah, years yeah, old and one new one it, it just don't Mike's have the same, same tone way. it's the same for microphones like, really oh yeah like um I bought a uh, a Neumann U87 and mm. like Fresh out the box, it, it sounded real harsh and real. And my dealer was telling me he was like, "Yeah, the older, the mm -hmm. older mics over time, you know, like you were saying, up. they warm up, like just that age." You know, your spits all over them. Yeah. Hey, man, the grease of it, it, there you your are. fingers. Yeah, all that grease. Of, that's you know. the flavor. Yeah, you know, for real.